This will continue our study on finding Jesus in Genesis. And today we're going to focus on Abraham and Isaac. We're going to find Jesus in this great story in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis. Let's, but first, let's start out with the verses that we've been quoting every time that prove Jesus himself sh- telling you that you can find him in the Old Testament. In Luke twenty four twenty seven. It says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. John 5, 39, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus said that. John 5, 46 through 47, For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings... How shall ye believe my words? So Jesus made it clear that you can open up the Old Testament and find him from Moses, the books of Moses, all the way through the prophets. But I'm going to show you some similarities between Isaac and the Lord Jesus. So, Okay, some similarities between Isaac and the Lord Jesus is both have miracle births. Uh, Jesus Christ was virgin born. That's a miracle. Isaac was born to Abraham in his old age. That's a miracle. Both are descendants of Abraham. Uh, Both fulfilled promises. Jesus Christ is the promised seed of Genesis 3.15. And and that's that's how you find Jesus in Genesis. That's the main theme of Jesus in Genesis is Jesus as the promised seed. And then Isaac, of course, fulfills the promise of being... The seed that that God promised Abraham. Both had pre-announced births. Both were mocked by their family. Uh, Both were undeserving of death. Okay, imagine Jesus Christ, while we're studying this, imagine seeing the Lord Jesus Christ walking to the place of His crucifixion while you hear the story of Abraham and Isaac on the way to to the sacrifice. Okay, Genesis 22. Let's start in Genesis 22 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. Now, how does that, what does that remind you of? Jesus Christ is the only begotten son. John 3, 16. Whom thou lovest. So, what did, the, what did the Father say to the Son? My beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, Abraham loved his son Isaac. The Father loved the Son, the Lord Jesus. So he says, Whom thou lovest, get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Just like Isaac was going to be offered on a mountain, Jesus Christ offered on a mountain. Luke 23, 33, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. We're already seeing tons of similarities right off. Matthew 3, 17 is that, that verse I told you that says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Uh... God tells Abraham, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Now Genesis 22, 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for a burnt offering, and rose up, and went into the place of which God had told him. Okay? When a man does something great for God in the Bible, usually you see that he's getting up, he's rising up early in the morning, just like Abraham here, just like you saw Moses do. But notice that Abraham took two young men with him. It says, and took two of his young men with him. Now what does that remind you of? On the way to Abraham sacrificing Isaac, he took two young men with him. And so, and that's just like the Lord Jesus Christ who had two men with him on the cross. Luke 23, 33, the two male factors that were with him. This, the similarities are incredible. The same way Isaac left home to be sacrificed, Jesus Christ leaves home to be sacrificed. 
2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his that ye through his poverty might be rich. Jesus left home, left the riches of heaven, to came down and die on the cross for your sins. He left home to be sacrificed. Isaac leaves home to be sacrificed. Now Genesis 22, 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar so off. Okay, the third day. You know that's significant. Because Isaac, at this point, is as good as dead. He's as good as dead because Abraham is determined in his mind that he's sacrificing Isaac when he gets up there. Abraham is going to offer him. However, on the third day, Isaac comes out alive. He ends up not dying. Just like Jesus Christ died, but on the third day, he comes out alive. I mean, it's not a perfect match because Isaac doesn't die and Jesus Christ does. But still, you see the similarity. It's not a coincidence. Now, verse 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. Notice that, come again to you. Abraham believed Isaac would be resurrected. Because he said they would come again to them. The Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. So the wood was laid on Isaac. Just like the wooden cross laid on the Lord Jesus. The wood was first carried by the ass, as you see in verse 3. Then carried by Isaac. Just like a man carried the cross first, then Jesus Christ. You see, we're the asses. We're the sinners. Simon, he represents us. We're the ass. And then Jesus Christ carried it. See, this is just, it's, the similarities are too incredible. How does this not blow your mind? It blows my mind how similar it is, written thousands of years apart. It's incredible. Mark 15, 21 through 22, And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him into this, the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. So you see, the wood was first carried by the ass, then carried by Isaac. Just like Simon carried the cross first, then Jesus. Okay, notice that Abraham had a knife that would be used in the sacrificing of Isaac. And in John 19, 34, but one of the elders with, with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. Just like Isaac was going to be pierced, the Lord Jesus Christ was pierced when he was on the cross. Now, verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So Isaac asked a question. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ asked a question when he was on the cross. He said, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Isaac said, Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And on the cross, Jesus took the wrath of God. He took our hell and was temporarily out of fellowship with God. And notice the verse said the fire and the wood. This picture is how Jesus Christ took our hell on the cross. He said, I thirst. The rich man in hell was thirsty. There's no water in hell. But he said, where's the lamb for the burnt offering? John the Baptist said about Jesus Christ, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And look what's said in verse 8 of Genesis 22. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So, it's, so he said, God will provide himself a lamb. 1 Peter 2.24, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Isn't that's incredible? God did provide himself a lamb. He was the lamb without blemish and without spot. And he died on the cross to pay 
for our sins. The Bible says he died for the sins of the whole world. He provided himself a lamb. You see what I'm saying there? He provided himself a lamb. And John 6.38, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Isaac was submissive to his father. It doesn't say nothing about him trying to fight and get out of doing this. Now verse 9, And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. So the Son of God was laid on the wood. He willingly laid down his life for us. John fifteen thirteen. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Verse 10, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, right here in the middle of it, you got a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus as the angel of the Lord. Once again, amazing. Called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither thou, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket. Now you're going to see something even more incredible. The ram also pictures Jesus Christ caught in a thicket. You know what Jesus Christ had? He had a crown of thorns. The ram, his head was caught in a thicket. Jesus Christ had a crown of thorns. Matthew 27, 29. Also, Jesus Christ is a king. What do horns represent many times in the Bible? Kings. And something crazy is, Isaac goes from being a picture of Jesus Christ to being a picture of us. Because if, instead of Isaac dying like we should die, the ram dies in his place. We should die, but Jesus dies in our place. See, this is just an incredible story. It's not a coincidence. The Bible is an amazing book. You should be interested in it. You should read it every day. You should love it more than Hulu and Amazon Prime. When you go out on a date, you should not watch Netflix and chill, as they say. You should read the Bible together. Because the Bible is an amazing book. So the ram was offered instead of Isaac, just like Jesus Christ is offered instead of us. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 10, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Galatians 1, 4, Who gave Himself for our sins, that He might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, till that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ took our place. He's what the Bible's all about. He's what life's all about. I mean, everything should be about giving glory to the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and shed His blood. Verse 14, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah-Jireh means the Lord will provide. And that's exactly what God did. He provided the perfect sacrifice for sin Himself. Jesus Christ shed, shed His blood. He was God manifest in the flesh. He is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God in flesh. Uh, I'm all about proclaiming the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people say, well, no, that's just His Son. No, Jesus is God. But this has been another study showing Jesus clearly in the book of Genesis. And hopefully if time goes on and nothing happens, we can just go... I plan on eventually going through all the Old Testament, showing Jesus on every page. As my pastor always says, you can find Jesus on every page of the Bible. So I started looking on every page, and I've I've not mentioned all the times that I found him on every page in these studies, but I'm, I'm on like page 80 right now. 
and I've, I'm pretty sure I've found him on every page. Sometimes it's very clear, sometimes it's not so clear. And I mean, it's probably there and I just don't see it, probably more of it that I'm not seeing. But if you want something to really get you interested in the Bible, wake up about an hour early in the morning, start in the book of Genesis and find, don't, don't leave the page until you find Jesus on that page.